Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's devotional. We've been going through the book of 1 John. Today we'll be reading out of 1 John chapter 3, starting in verse 8. Read with me. But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he's being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise, and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire, and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Okay, got a heavy passage here about the end of everything. Uh, but there's a lot of great stuff in here for the believer today. I mean, obviously, this is about some time in the future, but what can we learn for our here and now? Well, a couple of things. First of all, John is writing to a group of people who are going through a pretty hard time. They're facing persecution, they're facing the loss of their homes, the loss of their livelihoods, and occasionally the loss of their freedom and even their lives because of their testimony of Jesus. And it's hard. And obviously when you're in a hard situation like that, you start casting about for some hope. And of course they all remember that Jesus promised to return soon. He said he's going to the Father and one day he will come back from the Father. And so these believers are wondering, justly, where's Jesus? What is taking so long? We're suffering, we're dying in his name. Where did he go? Is he coming back at all? Or did we miss it? Or was he wrong? Or what's going on? And so the first thing that John is trying to encourage his audience with is hope. Hope that delay is not the same as denial that Jesus is not back yet. He's not slow. He hasn't forgotten what he promised. He's waiting on purpose. He's got a plan. There's meaning behind his delay. And I think for us, man, that right there, that's a, a very hopeful thing for me anyway. I know there's things in my life that I've been waiting for, things I've been believing God for, things I've been praying about, and I don't see him yet. I'm sure you feel the same way. And the temptation for us can be, well, God, did you just forget about me? Have you just uh, lost me in all the shuffle and the hustle and bustle of running the universe? Did you forget what you told me? No. John's very clear here. He's not slow concerning his promise, any of his promises. He's waiting, and there's purpose in the waiting. So don't get discouraged today if you've been waiting on God for something. He hasn't forgotten you. What is the purpose, though, in the waiting for him to come back? The second coming of Christ. It's one of the great hopes that we have as believers. What is he waiting for? Well, John tells us right here. He's not being slow. No, he's being patient. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. All right, so here's the thing. Right now, we have a window where people can hear the gospel they can respond in faith, and they can be saved. That's the season we're in right now, where there's still opportunity for repentance. There's still opportunity for people to say yes to the call of God on their lives and the drawing and the wooing of the Holy Spirit. One day, though, that season's going to be over, and it's this day, the day of the Lord, when he returns and he establishes himself as king of the earth and destroys this old earth and the old heavens will pass away and everything is made new again. Once that happens, there's no more repenting. There's no more coming to Jesus. There's no more altar calls. There's no more filling out a, a connect card at church because you said yes to Jesus. That day's over. And in that moment, just like it says, everything stands in judgment. Either I belong to Christ or I don't. So if Jesus were to come back right now and, and put to right every wrong and establish uh, himself as king of the world, and there's no question, 
everyone that you're praying for right now who's not saved, their time would be up. All of our uh, kids who are still away from God, their time would be up. Your coworkers, your your family members, uh, people we haven't even met yet, people uh, that we're going to send a mission team to in five years that we don't even know about yet, their, their time would be over. God is waiting for everyone to get the chance to repent. For you and I to get out there and share the gospel with everyone in our circle, everyone that we can serve, everyone that we can reach, God's waiting for that. So that when he returns, everybody will have had a chance to say yes to Jesus. So he's not slow. He's not just up there, I don't know, flinging cards into a hat. He's waiting for people to be saved. Giving them one last chance, one last chance, one last chance. And think about you and I, man, didn't God give you one last chance? Gave me one last chance. I'm glad that Jesus didn't come back before I got saved. I'm glad he waited. And there were other believers, good men and women of God who were just, Lord, come quickly. And he said, wait, not yet. Michael still needs to be saved. And he did the same thing for you. So I'm thankful that he waited for me and he waited for you. And so I'm thankful that he's waiting for others as well. And the last thing that we want to see here is that he's not going to wait forever. Yes, he's waiting and there's purpose in that waiting and People are going to get saved in that waiting, but one day that waiting is going to be done. And he says it's going to be like a thief in the night. I don't know if you've ever been robbed before, but once you realize what's happened, it's too late. They're gone. It's over. That's how the second coming of Christ will be. By the time you realize what's going on, it's too late to do anything about it. And it's going to be dramatic, right? The earth melting away in fire and uh, the heavens passing away with terrible noise and everything standing in judgment that day's coming. We have this hope, brothers and sisters in Christ, that this world is not all there is. There's another one coming. We have hope in the return of Christ. We have hope in the resurrection of the dead. We have hope being with him forever. Hold to that hope. Hang in there. God sees you. You're not forgotten. He's using this time in our lives to reach people. But one day, all the wrongs will be made right. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you for this hope that we have in Christ, that you haven't left us by ourselves. You haven't left us uh, to our own devices. God, but you walk with us every day in good times and bad. And I pray as we walk through hard moments while we're stuck waiting God, that we would wait with courage, that we would have patience and long-suffering, that we would be faithful to do what you've called us to do. Even when we don't understand and we don't see an end, help us to see you. And God, thank you that one day those that we're praying for are going to be saved, and one day you're going to come back and bring us home to be with you forever. God, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 